welcome everyone to Icon. Uh, my name is Dan, and I'm a pastor here, and I'm really excited that you guys are here. Uh, if you came last week for Easter, and you were a guest, and you actually decided to come back, uh, man, we are so glad that you're here. We're glad we didn't scare you off too much, uh, that you were at least like, these guys aren't too scary. I guess I'll come back and check it out. Uh, man, we are so glad you're here. And, and also, if you're a guest for the first time today, uh, man, we're, we're glad you're here. Uh, we love getting to do this. Uh, I was thinking this week about the fact that we, uh, those of us who kind of give some leadership to the church, that we get to do this. This is a, a dream job for us, and, and we absolutely love getting to do this. And what I was struck by as I was thinking about this last week is several of the conversations I had uh, last Sunday here at church. There were multiple people that came up to me uh, that, that were a little cautious, and I get it, uh, and they were saying, yeah, listen, I haven't been in a church in like a really, really long time, right? And we've talked to these people, maybe you know some of these people, and they're like, and honestly, I had one person say, they were like, here's the thing, I haven't been in church in a real long time. They explained some really bad experiences they had in church, and, and they're like, listen, I don't really do this church thing anymore, but I came because it was Easter, and, uh, and after that service, I, I need to tell you, it wasn't that bad. Which for me, I'm like, baby, that's a win right there, right? Like, like bad experiences. Like I said, I'll never go to a church and we get up. That wasn't that bad. I will take that all day long, right? Like that's, that's great. And had other people say, man, I haven't been in church in forever. And man, I was really able to get something out of this. And, and we as a church, that's a huge win for us. When we talk in our staff meetings about it, we celebrate those moments. Because for us, we want to be the kind of church and hopefully if you've been coming here for a while, you've experienced this, that unchurched, people who like don't really do the church thing, maybe never have done the church thing, or, and especially de-churched people, you know, some of you used to be de-churched before you came back to Icon, right? Like I used to do the church thing, and I got, maybe got burned by that, or maybe just I realized that wasn't for me, and now I'm kind of back. We want to be a kind of church for unchurched and de-churched people that they actually enjoy showing up right? Because we think if we can do that for them, the us church people, like uh, we, us weird people, like it, we're already bought in, right? Like this is already our thing. So if we can invite as many people in, because if we watch Jesus, what did Jesus keep doing, right? He kept going to the unchurched people. He kept going to the de-churched people that the religious leaders kind of kicked those people out. And Jesus said, you know what? I'll take you, right? Like you can join team Jesus, right? Like, and that's that's the kind of church that we wanted to be. You know, because we, we have this saying around here. In fact, our mission as a church, when we try to dial it down, our mission, our goal is to help people become more like Jesus. That's it, right? Like, that's our goal is we just want to help people become more like Jesus. And I'll be the first to say, like, I still need more of this, right? Like, even as the pastor here, like, I need to continue to become more like Jesus. It's something all of us can do. You never fully arrive there, right? And people who are unchurched and de-churched might say, well, man, what's the big deal about becoming more like Jesus? And we have a why behind this. The reason that we think this is important, the reason this is our mission, is we genuinely believe that when you do that, when you try to become more like Jesus, and as we all try to become more like Jesus, it will make your world better while it makes the whole world better, right? Like it's this win-win. We believe that when Jesus said, I came to give you abundant life, you want the best life possible, follow Jesus. And we think that will make your world better, right? It like makes you better at life too. And then in the process, as we all choose to live this kind of Jesus way, it actually makes our whole world a better place. It's as if as the water rises, all the ships rise with that. That's why we do this. And in fact, as we jump into every week, we try to really be helpful with our messages. Like our goal up here, like my goal is not to sound really smart because if I do that, I tricked you because I'm really not that bright, right? Like that, listen, I can sometimes lift some heavy things, but I'm not real bright, right? So, so here's the thing. We're, we don't try to sound like real impressive up here. We you know what we try to do? We're just trying to be helpful, right? When you walk out of here, our goal is for you to go, man, that helped me. 
that helped me become more like Jesus. And our goal is for whoever's in here, whether you're a follower of Jesus trying to become more like him, or even if you're here going, you know what, I mean, I'm just here to check this thing out. I'm not real sure about some things, and I just want to check this thing out. We want to be helpful to those people as well, right? Like, that's our goal. So, but here's the thing, because I want to be honest, and I want to be upfront today. Um, today's message will be a little different, right? Today's message won't necessarily apply to every single person in this room. In fact, I, and I want to be clear up front and say, if you're in this room and you're not like a follower of Jesus, you're not a Christian, you're still kind of unsure about things, today, like you get a pass, right? You just get to listen in and like as, as you listen, I'm going to give some like homework and I'm going to talk to the Christians in this room and you just get to, back, get to sit back and go, man, you suckers out there, like you guys are going to have to do this, right? You get a pass. If you're not a follower of Jesus, just listen in, but, because there's always a but, right? right? But my hope is as you hear what we're talking about, that maybe something in you might be stirred, that you might possibly be compelled a little bit to maybe lean into a message like this, okay? So with that kind of in mind, I want to kind of set this up. We're going to talk about something that really is for the Christians in the room. And, and I would argue, probably if you're a Christian in this room, what we're going to be talking about today, you have an opinion on, right? Like, I, I don't meet very many followers of Jesus, very many Christians that don't have an opinion on what we're going to talk about today. Now, I don't mean like an opinion as in, you have an opinion in politics. That's like a much more passionate opinion probably or opinions about other maybe hot topics of the day. This is kind of a church thing. And, and what I mean by opinion is you have a way of thinking about this, right? Like you have a framework from which you approach this subject. And what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about baptism. Because here's the thing, this series is called chapter two. And we want to talk about what happens after people decide to follow Jesus. And as we look at the life of Jesus, and as we look at the early church, many times after someone would choose to follow Jesus, there would be this thing that would happen called baptism, right? And a lot of people have a lot of opinions about baptisms, right? And let me, let me give you some examples. Um, like, uh, who in this room is a Baptist or like a former Baptist, right? Any Baptist? Okay, okay, so a good number of you, right? Like, if we would talk to the Baptist, the Baptists kind of have this on lockdown, Right? Like, they wanted to have the corner on the market on baptism, so they just called themselves Baptists, which is kind of unfair in my opinion. But at the same time, like, how do you argue with that, right? Like, that's their name. Like, if they, their opinion on baptism, you're going to argue with a Baptist on baptism? Like, good luck with that, right? Like, it seems as though they might have the corner on the market, and whatever their opinion is is right, correct? Except... Right? There's, there's other groups. Like, for instance, uh, any Catholics, former Catholics, any Catholics in the room or former Catholics? Okay, a few of you, some recovering Catholics, I noticed, like, I noticed, like, this hesitation. It's okay. It's a safe place, right? Right? So, but here's the thing with Catholics, though, right? Like, the original church, the early church that started, when Jesus made this declaration of who was going to start the church, the church would be built upon, who was it? Who was that first kind of follower of Jesus? This guy named Peter, right? Like, Peter really started the early church, and the Catholic church, the very first pope, who was it? Peter, right? So like, if anybody's got this thing right, right? They're like, oh, Baptist, you think you got this on lockdown. Let me see, when did you guys start again? Hold on, time out. Now, when did we start again, and who was our first pope, right? Like, and their opinions on baptisms couldn't be more different, right? They're like these two totally differing opinions on baptism. So it's like, well, what do you do with that? right? And sometimes people, there are some people that kind of hold those beliefs loosely, and then there's some people, and you may have met them, that they really hold tight to their opinion of baptisms. Not so much, not even just for themselves, but also for you. Like, I've talked to friends who've grown up in homes, and their family members are, like, intimately involved, like, when are you going to baptize your children? Right? Like, we need to know they're, they're babies, they've been born, like, let's get them dumped. Right? Like, I don't care, it doesn't have to, we can do it in the sink. Right? Like, they are just in it to win it. Right? Because there's some theology around baptisms that would say, man, if a child dies before they're baptized, then they're not going to go to heaven. To which I would say, if that's your, if someone genuinely holds that opinion, yeah, I get it. I understand why they would be like, come on, 
clock's ticking, baby. You know what I mean? Like, let's wrap that kid in bubble wrap or dunk them, like one or the other. Like, that would be a loving opinion if that's really what that person genuinely believed. So I get it. Right? There's people, uh, there's been so many times, I kid you not, that here at the church, we'll get a call in and someone wants to talk about baptism. They're like asking questions, right? And for us in the church, we're like, yeah, we get excited about this. Someone's asking about when our next baptism is, and we're telling them, we're like, oh, this is awesome, right? And they're like, so, you know, you want to get baptized? Can we get your name down? And they're like, oh, no, 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 it's not for me, which is usually a red flag. And you're like, okay, go on, right? And they're like, yeah, I'm asking for, and many times they'll be asking for their child or for their grandchild. And then I ask like some more questions, right? I start digging a little bit deeper, and I found out like that their child or their grandchild doesn't even know that they're calling, Right? And I'm like, okay, this is going to be a non-starter. Like, just this isn't probably isn't going to work. Right? And they're like, listen, I, I, they probably don't want to, but, you know, maybe if we, like, if they, like, schedule, like, an intervention. And I'm like, listen, listen, we're not going to do this. Right? Like, this just isn't kind of our thing. I also got an email from a lady one time. And she emailed in, and she was very concerned. And she, she really wanted to know what words we use when we baptize people. Right? And her question is, who... Who do you baptize people in the name of? And, and she was really passionate. And I was like, um, Jesus, right? Like I was a little like, where's she going with this, right? And she quoted, she accurately quoted this verse. I want to read this verse. This is from Acts. Um, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And she said, therefore, because of this verse, you should only baptize people in the name of Jesus when you dunk them. The words really matter. You should say, in Jesus' name, I baptize you, right? And that's it. And I understand. Like, she was passionate about that. And honestly, here at Icon, most of the time, what we say is we say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then we don't. That's usually what we do, right? So if you look at the verse this lady's quoting, it's like, Dan, you kind of missed it, right? Like, that's, you're not doing it right. You need to say only Jesus' name. The, the, The only problem with that is these like pesky words of Jesus, right? Because here's what Jesus said about baptism. Jesus put it this way, Jesus speaking, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To which I wish the Bible would start agreeing with itself once in a while, right? Like somebody's missing this, right? Like this, this is multiple choice. I don't see in all of the above, right? Like, like I really wish the Bible would be more clear sometimes, right? And, and, and I get it, like, so in light of all of this, there's like, we've got these differing opinions. Some people are really passionate about those opinions. There's different times you do it, different ways you do it, different words you do it. Like, where do you go with all of that, right? And, and, and more than that, like, what does it mean? Like, it, why is it important? Or better yet, is it important? Not why does it matter, but does it matter? And to answer these questions, we're going to do something uh, they, that, again, we don't do very often uh, here at Icon. I'm going to give you, like, a really quick crash course in Greek, right? Like, like real crash course, real simple. Um, and here's the thing. You guys are first service, right? So I'm not worried about you guys. You guys are really smart. Early bird gets the worm. You know, you're getting up early. You guys are sharp. You got Second service, I'm a little nervous about. I'm going to be honest. They're not too bright in second service, Right? And third service, quite honestly, is basically romper room. So I I don't know where this message is going with third service, right? But at least in first service, I know you guys are good with this, right? So so here's the deal. We're going to do like quick crash course in Greek, right? So here's the deal. In this verse right here that we're talking about, most of the time, this was written in Greek. So the original manuscripts are in Greek. So when people would translate this to English or other languages, what they do is they go through this word by word. So first they go up and they go, this word go, right? Go in Greek is this. So the English word for that, they just translate it. Literal word for word translation. So go, and they do go. And then the Greek word for make, and then make. And then Greek word for disciples, and they English word disciple, right? And they go through, but then they do something weird, right? So they're translating word for word. They're going through go, make, disciples of all nations. And then they get to this word baptizing, right? And they do something really weird. So we got to start with the Greek word. So the Greek word for baptize is this right here. And sound it out, everyone. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, no. So the Greek word is baptizo. Everyone say baptizo. 
See, you guys are smart. Third service, it's going to be like baby shark. They're just going to sing that back to me, right? Like, so you guys are good though. So baptizo, right? So, okay, so here's the, we can all say it. baptizo, what that literally means, baptizo means to wash, to dip, to soak, or submerge, right? So that's literally what's going on. But, but they realize something kind of odd is happening because this is the literal definition of baptizo. So when they came to it, they used the word baptize. But most of the time, you would use one of these words. You'd use like wash or soak or submerge, something like that. And in fact, they do that in other places that this Greek word shows up. For instance, in Mark uh, chapter 7, uh, when they came from the marketplace, they did not eat unless they baptizo. And they said wash, right? Now, if they would have done what they did in the other place, it's like they get home from the marketplace unless they like get baptized. And it's like, oh, hold on. We got to eat real quick. And I mean, the fathers, you know, and they're like going in the bathtub, like baptizing each other. And they're like, all right, let's go. Right. And then it gets more complicated because then if you keep going in this verse, it actually says, and they observe many other traditions such as the baptizoing of cups, washers, and or, uh, pitchers and kettles. Right. So they're like taking all their washware. And I mean, the fathers, and they like baptize their like silverware. Right. So that's obviously not what's happening. They're just saying they would wash the dishes before they would eat. They would like wash their hands before they would eat. But then they got to that verse that we were at earlier and, and they realized like Jesus isn't talking about like taking a bath, right? Like he's not just saying like, you know, go and make disciples and make sure they have good hygiene, right? Which is a win, right? Like well, we want to do that, but, but he's getting at something else. He's getting at something bigger. So what they do is they realize something weird is happening with this word baptizo. So what they do instead of translating it is they transliterate it. And what that means is they take each letter here. I'm going to look back up here. So that first they go, okay, that's B, that's beta, B, and then alpha, A, and then pi, P. And they just create this new word called baptize, right? They just kind of transliterate this new word. and They kind of make up this new word called baptize because they acknowledge something different is happening here. And if we were just to say wash or soak, that's not getting at what's happening. It, it, there's something new happening. It's, we're, so we're just going to make up a word and call it baptize, right? So what are the implications for this? And where do we see this first kind of cropping up, right? We see this first kind of being introduced kind of in human history with this guy named John, right? And John is a cousin of Jesus. He's an older cousin. And he's going out and he's like preaching out in the countryside in Israel, right? And they end up calling him John the Baptist, now, Baptists, listen, that's not where you got your name from. You know, it's not like, well, John was the first Baptist. Perfect, we beat the Catholics, right? That's not, that's not why they call him that, right? He also could have, you know, so he's going out and he's like, he's baptizing people, right? And what he's doing is he's saying, hey, if you want to follow this new way, there is this new way that's coming, and John is kind of ushering it in. And his sermon, if you could like boil down his sermon to like a note card, it would be like, repent. Stop doing that. Stop it. Do this instead. Repent. Like, that's basically what John is saying, right? And he's saying these things, and a lot of people are starting to follow him. And John is this Jewish person. So he's kind of presenting this new Jewish way to approach God. And then, like, these Gentiles start showing up, who Gentiles are like everyone non-Jewish. So, like, most of us, right? Like, so we start showing up. And John says, you can follow this new way of following God. You can be a part of this. And the Jews actually had a process for becoming Jewish, right? So the Gentiles, like, normally would be like, yeah, tell us how to do it. Like, we're ready to follow God. We, we want to do this, right? And normally, usually, the step, it includes several steps. The first step for becoming Jewish, right, for the Gentiles of that day, step one would be circumcision, to which all the guys go, you know what? Yeah, I'm really not that interested, right? Like, you know, I'm going to take a hard pass there. You know, sweetie, you can go ahead and follow this John guy, but I'm going to take a pass, right? And if you are unclear on what baptism is, first you take the, never mind. We'll just leave that part out, right? You can look it up later, right? So, like, here's the thing. That's what it would usually take. The, the Gentiles would usually come, and the Jewish person would say, yeah, you got to follow these laws. you got to follow, do these different things, and that's included. But John says something different. John says all you have to do is acknowledge that you want to follow this new way of living. Make this decision. You have to repent. And all repent means is it means like turn. Like when you acknowledge, yeah, when I do this, it keeps making my life bad. 
Like, I keep doing this dumb thing, and it's not working out for me. John says, yeah, then don't do that anymore. Then make a decision to turn in your life 180 degrees and go a different direction. And then John says, then you come and you can get baptized. And it's this symbol, this declaration that you've made this kind of decision. And the Jews of that day had this thing that was kind of similar to baptism. It was this like ritual, cleansing, bathing kind of thing. Uh, But it was different because that always happened in private. And always, there was always a process behind it. It was a ceremony that you did, and it was in private. But John's baptism was different because it was public. It was out in front of, for everyone to see. And he was saying, you're making this declaration for everyone to see that you're wanting to follow this new way of life. I mean, really, John could have gotten the name, had the translating people done it differently. He could have been called John the Washer, right? Which doesn't have the same ring right? And then you'd all be washists. And that's just really weird, right? So like we dodged the bullet on that one because they realized he's not just washing them. Like this isn't like a a bath. This is something different. This is symbolizing this public declaration that's happening. So let's go back to that verse, right? So the verse that we were looking at, therefore, this is Jesus speaking, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying that when you choose to follow me, when you make this decision, I want you to go public with it. I want you to be baptized. The reason we think it's important here is because Jesus says it's important. In fact, Jesus' very last command was this. This was Jesus' final command to his followers. Go and make disciples. And a disciple is just someone trying to be more like Jesus. This verse is really where we got our mission. To help people become more like Jesus. Because if I were to say to someone who's not a Christian, doesn't know anything about that, our goal is to make disciples here. They'd look at me sideways and they'd say, you go for it, buddy, right? No one uses that word anymore. So the way we framed it is our goal is just people trying to be like Jesus. So Jesus said, you know what? I agree with this statement, this public declaration so much. Jesus actually got baptized by John, right? Jesus said, I'm going to lead the way in this and show you, here's what I want you to do. Now, as you get people to follow me and as people decide, man, I want to follow this Jesus person, then I I want you to baptize them. So Jesus kind of is making a few statements about baptism, and they're statements that we agree with here at Icon, that we believe in, that we would make too. And that's number one, that baptism is a public declaration of a new association. It's this public thing. It's this public declaration of this new association that you have with Jesus. You're saying, I want my life to be associated with the life of Jesus. I want when people to look at my life, listen, I'm not perfect, but I want them to see some of the same values that Jesus had for love of one another, right? For honoring one another. All of these things that Jesus taught and emphasized, I want my life to be associated with that. And I want to go public. I want other people to know that I've made that same decision. The second thing that Jesus is saying and that we agree with is that baptism is a personal declaration of a new association. Clearly, as we see the model of Jesus, as we watch John the Baptist doing this, it's when people can make this like personal decision, uh, cognitively saying, yes, I want that for my life. That's why for us here at Icon, listen, I'm not knocking anything, but for us, we don't practice infant baptism because of this, because an infant can't make that personal decision, right? And we don't see anything in the teaching of Jesus. We don't see anything in the life of Jesus that would argue if someone hasn't been baptized yet, if someone hasn't made that decision, that they're going to be forever separated from God. We don't see that anywhere. In fact, in the teachings of Jesus, he seems to continue to welcome kids to him, right? Like, that's the ministry, that's the life that he lives. So we believe that it needs to be this personal decision. And then finally, last, the baptism is not a a condition of a true decision. It's evidence of that decision. Here's what we mean by that. Nothing magical happens in the whole process, right? Like the water isn't special water. It's from a hose, right? Like it's nothing, like I don't like do something over it, right? I don't even put chlorine in it. I'll just be honest, right? Like it's just normal water, right? Maybe I should. Uh, Just ignore that if you're getting baptized. Don't just, it's a bad mental picture, right? Anyway, right? Like there's nothing magical that happens, When you like go under the water and then you come back up, there's nothing like magical that happens that now all of a sudden it's this condition 
of a decision, but it's evidence of one. If you've made a decision, you're wanting there to be evidence of that decision, and you're wanting to publicly say, man, I want people to know about this. And for us here at Icon, there's two things. There's one thing for us that doesn't really matter a ton, and then one thing that does kind of matter to us. So these two things for us, it says it's form and timing. The form doesn't really matter. Like, like how it happens, right? Like as a church startup, we started Icon Church about six years ago. We've baptized people in like the river before. We've bad people, baptized people in a hot tub. I kid you not, it was a portable hot tub when we were at a school. Hey, at least the water was warm, right? Like we've done that before. We, we've, there's all different ways. The form doesn't really matter. There's some places on this planet that don't even have a lot of water that they just use a water bottle. Like, so the thing is, form to me doesn't really matter that much. It doesn't. It's just that it's happening. But what does matter is this idea of timing. The, listen, the, again, like I said, we don't practice infant baptism. So if you were baptized as an infant but never as an adult, but you're following Jesus, man, why not make this public decision? Why not make this public declaration that you're choosing to follow? Or I've talked to some people who said, man, I was baptized when I was a kid, when I was in middle school or high school, and man, my whole life kind of happened. I kind of left all of that. But recently, I've decided that I want to make this new decision that I want to be more like Jesus. Should I get baptized again? And I say, if you want to, absolutely. You're more than welcome. Do you have to? No. But why not? If you get to make this public declaration in front of people that are cheering you on and in your corner and supporting you, what better way to celebrate? So for us, we do baptism a few different times a year. And it's a time for us, I'll just be honest, we look at it as like a party, right? It's a celebration. We do it at the end of service. And if people need to go to take off, that's totally fine. But we ask people to stick around. And we have a little baptismal tank over here. You can tell by the water stain right on the edge there. And we set it up over there. And people are getting baptized. And music is going. And we're putting their stories up on the screen with a picture of them. Everyone's cheering. And it's this exciting moment. It's one of my favorite times of the year. And we're doing baptisms actually next Sunday. So our baptism Sunday will be May 5th next Sunday. And I I couldn't be more excited. We've already talked to people. There's been people that have been calling. I had coffee with someone recently that was saying, I want to get baptized. I was baptized as a kid, but I've made this new decision that I I want to be more like Jesus. And I want my church family. I want everyone here to know about that decision. So listen, if that's you, we're going to do something a little different. As we close out here in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you all an opportunity that if you want to be a part of that, If you want to get baptized, that you can be a part. So the host teams, here's what they're going to do. You guys can go ahead and start coming down. They're going to pass out these cards. And the cards, they look like this. And they're going to start coming down the aisle. And they're going to give every single one of us a card. So even if you're not getting baptized, that's okay. Just take a card. Pretend like, oh, I'm so excited. You know, so that other people don't feel weird. Right? So they're going to pass the cards down. And all it says is a little box on there that you can check. Put your name, your phone number, and email. And if you've decided to follow Jesus, and either you've never been baptized Or maybe you were baptized as a little kid, you know, and you've made this kind of new decision, or you were baptized a while ago, but you want to get baptized again. Listen, we want you to be a part of this Sunday. What a great day. I mean, imagine getting to celebrate with half a dozen, a dozen, two dozen people. Getting to say, listen, there's this old way of life that I have. There's this old way of living. I used to live one way, but now I'm declaring I want to be more like Jesus. And we are believing that's going to make their world better, right? And we believe watching all of these people get baptized, that that's going to make the whole world better, right? What an amazing thing to celebrate. It's a great thing. If you're getting baptized, invite your family, invite your friends, the people that are important in your life. So if that's you, just right now, real quick, go ahead and fill this out. We'll take time to do it right here in service. So everyone kind of like bend down like you're pretending to write. Like, I don't know, you can check what time the game's on if you're not getting baptized or whatever. But just not to make people feel weird. But if you want to get baptized, man, what an exciting time that we get to celebrate this together. So if that's you, go ahead and fill out this card. We'll reach out to you this week and give you all the details and the specifics. We'll kind of walk you through what that means and when to get here and all of that stuff. We'll work that out this week. But if that's you, go ahead and fill this out. And then after service... The host teams, they're going to be standing at the back, and they're going to have those little black buckets. So afterwards, excuse me, afterwards, if you filled out this card, go ahead and drop it in the bucket on your way out, and we'll reach out to you uh, this week. And I want to encourage all of you, even if you're not getting baptized, 
come back next week, that we get to celebrate. I'm telling you, it's one of the best Sundays that we get to celebrate together. It'll be a great time of singing some songs together and watching people make this decision and getting to read their stories up on the screen. Uh, I want to encourage all of you to come back next week for this incredible Sunday as we all celebrate together. Amen? Awesome.